Hi teachers, today I want to show you some basic features in Seesaw. I know a lot of you are trying to decide what platform to use. I feel very confident using Google products, however, I find Seesaw very user friendly for parents, for teachers, and for students. So once you've set up your Seesaw account, you are going to use your computer. You can also um, create activities and, and assign things on your phone. With that, you are going to need an app called Seesaw Class. So this tutorial is going to show you how to do things from your computer. So here, and I have a Mac. I'm not sure if it's different on a PC, but I, I just want to let you know I have a Mac. So once you're, you've logged in, you're going to come up here to this drop down menu and you're going to hit create new class. You're going to give your class a name and choose your grade level. Once you're done filling this out, you are going to find that class here on the left. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use this class. So to assign students and add students, you are going to go over to the settings option and you're going to see your class name here. You can also add other teachers to your class. You can choose, you can change the way your, um, the, the colors, the color scheme. You can also choose a class icon and here you can upload an image from your computer. So this part is the one that's going to be a little bit tricky for you. The first thing you're going to select is your sign-in mode. In the classroom, I chose this one, share devices with one QR code when I didn't have when I wasn't one-to-one. -one. This is the one I have chosen to use from home. You can also choose for students to use their email and Google. So I'm going to select that and go back. Now you're going to assign your students or select students or put in their names on this in this part. So let's say I want, um, let's say I want um, Jamie. Oh, there's already a Jamie. Let's see. Maggie, add students. And you can also paste a list. So let's say you have all your 25 students already created. Now, from home, you are going to use this home learning student codes. And this is a new feature that they have added so that students can use a QR code or a code so that they don't see everyone's um, uploads. So I click there and I can print the codes if you have a way to send it to them. And I can also download the codes. And this is a spreadsheet. Now, when you print the codes, it's going to be a QR code, and I'll sh explain that later. But you will need to figure out a way to send these codes to your students. So once you're done with that, we're going to go back here. I usually, I, I usually have this all off, but from home, I'm going to enable student likes, but I'm turning off my student comments because I have my parents, my students are little, so I have my parents sending me questions. So once you're done with that, you can see, can students see each other's work? I have that off. They can see it in the journal and they can see it in the blog. New items require approval. You wanna have this on, well, I like to have it on, especially when I use it in the classroom because sometimes I'll be giving a direction or I'll be correcting behavior and that's all recorded. I can also enable, uh, you want to enable editing because if you upload an assignment, you want them to be able to edit. Um, and also it's good to have an, um, a sample student in your class so you can see what things look like. So here's the part for family access. You want to, your families to be able to connect to your journal, your Seesaw Learning Journal. Now. On their phone, they are going to download an app called Seesaw Family. You do not, sorry, you do not want them to, the mistake that is commonly made is they're going to download the Seesaw class. You don't want that. They need to download on their phone Seesaw Family. So you're going to invite them here. You can print the invites 
or share a link or enter their um, their email. Oops. So let's go back here. I close that out. So we're down here with families. So manage families. You can see who's connected and who isn't. You can also invite families here. And here's your pending approval. It's going to ask you to approve them so that they can connect. So family likes and sharing. I usually turn this off. I enable family likes. You can do whatever you, you, you'd like for your classroom, but this is these are the settings that I use. I usually I turn this off, but for the remote or distance learning, I have that turned on. And I also want to um, require an approval so I can delete comments that are inappropriate. So we're down here for family. We've done that. If you want to blog that other people on the internet can see, you can turn that on. And this one's good because you can set up folders. So here you have your language arts folder. You can basically um, sort the activities and upload. So let's say you want math, maybe you're going to upload a math activity. And then I want to change that color. I, I don't want them to be the same. Oops, I just accidentally deleted. So math, color, check. So that's also a nice feature. Here, show add to folder step only for teachers, students, and teachers. You just want to keep things very simple. Now, the last part is skills rating. I don't really um, use these, and I don't save it to my camera roll. It's, it just takes up a lot of memory here. Okay, so we're done setting up our account. I'm going to click, let's see what this says. So get students signed in. This is also a very, um, they make it very user friendly with explicit directions on how to do this from home. So that's it. Um, now I'm going to click out and I'm going to show you the different tabs that your students can select from. So many times in the classroom, I will use this journal. Now for Distance learning, I have been using activities, which is here. I don't have anything posted yet um, on this tutorial class. I'll do that in my next tutorial. Here are the messages from parents. And to send a message to my families, I will go here. And I can, it'll ask, it'll prompt you to um, send a message. You have to choose, and it's a private message. Um, you have to choose who you're sending it to, and these are private messages between you and your parents. So that's pretty much it. That's how um, easy it is. Um, since I do not have my blog set up, you can, once you turn that on, you can have, one of these things will be a blog. So when you go into here, you'll see everything that Christina has done, everything that Diana has done, etc. Well, I hope that you found this very useful and easy to use.